EAA Chapter 166 in Hartford, Connecticut. It's a home of the Vans RV12 build, and it's another build night here in the RV12 construction hangar. And uh, for the RV12 project, uh, the major milestones are starting to get checked off pretty quickly, and the latest milestone is the installation of this engine. It's a Rotax uh, 912 series, and as we've talked about in previous videos, not exactly a slap-and-go project. There was a lot of prep work that was needed before hanging the engine, and in our case, we had to do some service bulletins before we were able to get the mounting uh, in place. To tell us what it took, let's talk to uh, Mark Welch. So as Larry mentioned, uh, we're going to talk about uh, getting the uh, engine uh, mounted on the airframe. Uh, but l let's take a step back to uh, what you get and what you have to do. So the engine itself comes in a, uh, a crate, uh, but what we learned is it's, uh, it's basically uh, kind of probably like has a standard configuration of how they put these engines together. And depending upon what uh, aircraft you're putting it into, you have to make certain modifications. So obviously the van's um, instructions show you how to go about making these changes or modifications to uh, work with uh, their particular airframe. So the, um, the first thing is there's a series of things that you have to do um, to get the engine mount on. Uh, this particular engine mount, uh, it's, it's a rather interesting one. It has this sort of circular uh, frame that uh, ties in at four locations in the back of the engine. And then that again mounts to uh, a subframe that's on the engine itself. So in order to uh, get it onto the uh, engine, you have to remove a number of things or, or take apart a number of things like the ignition module. You have to take apart some of the um, hoses for the uh, cooling system on the bottom and uh, pull things out of the way so that you can get this, this frame on there. And I will say it, their, their instructions are as thorough, but you really have to follow them to get this thing on because there's only one way that that frame goes on. I, Rick and I spent a good half an hour fiddling with it to, to get it over all the components without damaging anything. But that said, we got that mounted on. Uh, we got those components uh, put back together. And then there was some other subtle things that had to be done. For instance, um, this little um, uh, fuel connection here had to be flipped uh, around so that um, the uh, hoses going to the, um, to the uh, other components uh, would fit properly. So that had to be reversed as well as uh, a plug taken out of the bottom of it and stuff. And then these hoses now go to the uh, transducers and things like that. Uh, another thing, uh, a rather odd one, is we actually had to cut a leg off of the starter motor. There's a couple of uh, lug connections on the back side of it, and they have you shave one off. Uh, again, I'm assuming it's for some clearance issues and stuff. We haven't seen where that, that plays in yet. Um, but that's about where we're at right now. Uh, once we got uh, those things done on a bench, basically we had a, a bench here that we, the rolls, which was kind of nice. So we put the engine up on it. We blocked it underneath so it would be stable. Did all those modifications, got the engine mount on, and then rolled it over here. But again, because this is a pretty lightweight engine, I think it's in the range of 145 pounds, uh, two of us just held it in place while uh, a couple of the um, students just put the uh, bolts in for the, um, for the main connection. And that is about where we're at right now. We're just about ready to finalize some of these hose connections um, and finish up the other interconnections here. Then we move on to things like the oil cooler and the water cooler and things like that. 